All this inland championship action is proudly brought to you by EV Dynamics and their associate sponsors. As we've seen throughout the season, unfortunately with Red Star Raceway not being available for a couple of rounds, we've had to do a bit of shuffling. And that's why the Inland Championship is now combined with the Extreme Championship and come to Swatkops for a big round of racing. We've got BMW Car Club here, proudly sponsored, of course, as always, by Bridgestone. The NX Legends are in the house, and so are the Motel, modified production cars, and Super Saloons. A little bit of combining and shuffling here as well with the categories on the day. So we'll look to see what exactly what's going to happen now, but have a look at that. Absolutely perfect conditions here today. A little bit of rain expected, but hopefully that stays away. The circuit length, of course, 2.4 Ks, and Swatkops brings out some phenomenal action always. We kick things off with the Bridgestone BMW Car Club Racing Series. And at the front end of this field, it's been a massive battle between Rick Larea and Paolo Larea. Andreas Mayer has been in there as well, so has Oz Bagioni, and of course the number one car of Jan Everstein as the man with the target on his back. In the mid-pack, we've got battles in Class C. Shane Krobler looking to improve and get to the front end and fight hard with Jimmy T and with Anthony Marks. Class D, Troy Cochran basically had his all his own way this season, but he's been fighting with Hillegen as they make their way out onto the track now for race number one. Lights out and we go racing down into Cabinium Insurance Corner. It's a good start at the front end, as you can see. They're all just trying to get through turn one and it's not an easy thing to do yet. Climbing on the brakes and down into turn two now, the hairpin. Looks like a good start there from Antony Marks. Billy Erasmus starting to put the pressure on as well. Ah, around the outside, watch out for ball two as he comes through. Turn number two, Craig Ball forcing one of the drivers off the circuit there. A little bit of evasive action. Got a bit of action already and it's only lap number one. It's only halfway through lap number one as they get to turn four. Just see things starting to settle down now. Let's see whether or not they can keep it all together now through turn four up to the top of the hill. Pressure being applied there by the Big Boss car. We go on board here with Shane Krobler. He's looking for a possibility of a victory in Class C. And already starting to give the pressure onto the back end of Antony Marks. Good little C-Class battle there. The two cars there, the Mayfair Gearbox car, fighting hard as it comes up into Kenwood. There's Jimmy T looking for a chance also to come through for honors in Class C. Let's see whether or not he's able to do that. The one car further back in the pack, Jan Everstein. Front end though, some super, super battles expected. And as I said, the big boss man looking for an opportunity. Oh, running a little wide, getting a little bit squirrely out of there. Just managing to hang on. And a, oh, he's got big pressure, massive pressure coming from behind there. And Kutsia is looking for a way through. Hasn't found it yet. At the front, oh, it's so close between these guys. This very, very tight up, great ball now. Onto the back end of David Kutsia. This is Vili Erasmus's point of view as we head into turn three. Clipping the apex very, very early, and there goes Kutsia. A little bit of additional power around the outside and getting through. Also with that wing, giving a bit more downforce for that turn three. Ball now on the inside of him. Oh, losing out there, unfortunately, to Lamprecht. Sean Lamprecht just opening up that door. Since he's opened the door, we're on board here with Craig Ball. There's the gear change, and he's going to come back at him. Can he be good enough on the brakes? We'll wait and see. In the background, looks like he was. Out front though, Leroy disappearing. Looks like Osbagioni now under a bit of pressure as the rest of this pack start to climb onto the back of the man in third. Kutsia looking for a chance to close down. But you can see at the front, Leroy getting away. Andreas Mayer starting to put in a bit of pressure there too and looking for opportunities that might be arising at this point. But there's not a lot in it. The battle for third right now. First and second starting to open up some margins. 4, 5 and 6 starting to come into the play as well, and so is 7 and 8th place. The 19 car of Leroux, slowly but surely making his way from the back of the field, and now coming up and ticking them off one by one. Has he got enough time to get to the front though? That's what we're going to have to be worried about. Wow! Sideways from Lamprecht. Well caught, ball comes straight onto him. RSI car looking to try and dominate after he sees that mistake. Can't quite get on the inside. Here comes Jimmy T as well. It's red. Blue and yellow, all fighting hard. Right now, the yellow car of Jimmy T on the brakes onto the inside, ball loses out. Everstein gives us a great shot of that as we go into GNH Transport Corner. Coming across the start finish line, another lap done. Now, Everstein looks to dive on the inside, ball running a bit wide there through turn one. Not quite getting the apex right, opening up that door. 
That'll give an opportunity and possibly some luck there. Devastine, if he can just make it stick. The 86 car up on 20 marks now under threat. Looks like, oh, some problems. Oh, and Jimmy T just avoids one of the cars who's got a big problem there. I think that was David Kutsia. Kutsia pulling to the sideline. And that is a massive, massive loss to the front end of this race. Great driving from Jimmy T to avoid that car that was slowing dramatically up the hill. He went for the overtaking manoeuvre. Had to back out of it ever so slightly. Now Paolo Lara starts to come into play. Lara diving on the inside. Vili Erasmus giving us a good shot here as Lara goes on the inside of the 31. And JB's got no answer. JB Britt now having to fight with Paolo Lara. Where is Rick? Has he been able to find a way to the front end? He's not too far off. Further back in the pack, the 100 car is Mike Robler. Fighting with that number 57 and 27, Alan Hillegen. And look at the big puff of smoke as he goes up the hill on the gear change. This guy's pushing these cars to the limit and way beyond. The 27 car there is Hillegen. And Hillegen at this stage, looking for a chance of the win in Class D. Remember, Krobler is a Class C car. Hillegen, though, has left the rest of Class D behind him and using Mark Krobler to get away from them. Leroux dives on the inside. Oz sees him coming, shuts the door. Paolo now very close. Can he find a way past? Should be able to. He had to turn one. Is he good enough? Yes, he is. Dives through, and the pool man has to just give up the ghost there. Of course, he's just losing out to that little battle. So Andreas Bauer has led out basically from the word go, but it looks like Rick Leroux might have just overtaken him and taken the lead. Married to second, Leroux is third. So as we've seen pretty much all season long, it's a Leroux sandwich at the front end. Further back, this is the 8-6 car of 20 marks fighting with Jimmy T. To Meglu around the outside of Sassel. Can he keep it all together? Yes, he can. Not a lot of room to play out there. Now he tries to go through Kenwood. They still side by side. Tucks in behind. Just behind them by the looks of things that could be Neil Reynolds coming to play. Yep, the Valve Hospital car right on their tail. Three-way battle and this is for second place in Class C. Very nice little fight here between the three of them. Late breaking from Ball. Dives on the inside, eventually finds a way through on Lamprecht. Lamprecht comes straight back at him. Ball and Lamprecht, very similar cars. And oh, a little touch. There you go. Let's see if those Bridgestones can handle it. Yes, they can. Nice little rubbing his racing moment there from Lamprecht on the back end of Ball. Erasmus now. And he's got the hard charging Bavaria car of Everstein. And he's on the inside, diving through, late on the brakes. Erasmus opens up the door, the Viking mining and Big Boss car, having to take a little bit of a wider line through turn two. He didn't quite expect that one. But now as they come through turn three, he's got good drive. Further down, looks like yeah, Jimmy T's got the second. Tameglu up to second and 20 marks to third. Reynolds on his tail. Can Neil Reynolds find a way through there on marks? Look at the wind in the background. I'm a bit concerned about the gray clouds as well. We were expecting some rain. Hopefully it's going to stay away. We'll wait and see. Right now it's dry conditions for this heat. Oh, late breaking there from the valve hospital machine, but it looks like it is going to be Neil Reynolds. You cannot find a way past just yet. Chicken flag about to come out there. And Leroux takes the victory. Rick Leroux taking the overall victory and Class T. Andreas Mayer will come through for the Class B honors. He, of course, is second overall. Paolo Leroux there in second in Class B and Oz Baggioni in third. Krobler takes the C's ahead of Tomeglu and Marks. Hillegen taking the D's. Nick Macris and of course Troy Cochran there in the D category. Good drives all around there. And up next, join us after the break for heat number two from the BMW Car Club Racing Series. Proudly brought to you by Bridgestone. Welcome back to the Inland Championship action from SWAT Corps. Real racing and real people as always. Out here at SWAT Cups now for heat number two of the BMW Car Club Racing Series. Proudly brought to you by Bridgestone. David Kutsia has got his car sorted out. Hopefully it'll be okay for race number two. But as you can see, a little bit of wetness on those cameras, which means we're in for a possibility of some rain during the second heat. Let's see if we can keep it all together. The dry conditions are going to make it very difficult as they get into the wet later on. Good start here. Leroux leads out on his tail. Looks like it's going to be a bit of a tough battle here in Class B. The Class T's at this stage. Lorenzo Gotteri and of course Rick Leroux, Jonathan Matos, all fighting hard for the honours there in the Class T's. But if it does rain, T cars are going to be a very, very big handful of car, especially here at this uh, little circuit. 
Swatkops always proves for great racing. But when the water comes down, it makes it very difficult, particularly if you've got a highly powered machine. The latter part of the field, in other words, Class C and Class D, will then start to come into their own because they don't have to worry about too much power underfoot. Paolo Rowe, uh, late on the brakes, dives on the inside. The 31 car there of JB Britt with no answer, but he tries to hang on to him through Sassel. They are side by side now, heading towards Kenwood, double right hander. Ahead of them, it's uh, Everstein, you can see. Everstein applying the pressure there to Andreas Mayer. And Mayer's got his own pressure coming from the inside. Oh, it's so close there between those two cars. Mayer trying to close down there on Billy Erasmus. Very, very close action at the front end. Nine laps to go. Osbagioni there sitting in the third spot as they head down into turn one. Here comes Loraya. Paolo around the outside. Trying to find a way early on to close down on these two. Erasmus dives on the inside. Good move there from Billy. That's a really good move. Try and put some cars between himself and Andreas Mayer. But Mayer, oh man, he's looking good. Very, very cool to see those, that livery on that car as well. As it comes around the outside and onto the back straight ahead of Billy Erasmus. Remember the old uh, touring car, BMW's running that livery. And of course, piloted by Sean van der Linde and Dion Joubert, if I'm not mistaken. But as they go through turn four now, it's Loreo closing in on Baggioni. Everstein runs wide. I wonder if there's a little bit of wet patches out there. It's starting to see, seem like cars are not getting the same amount of grip as what they did earlier on. Loreo tries to find grip on the inside. Diving through there on Os Baggioni. Baggioni opens up the door, lets him through. I think Baggioni realizes he's in for a bit of a fight there with uh, Loreo. That car is slightly quicker and a little bit more powerful than Badgers. But uh, let's see if Oz can keep them all together. Everstein and the Bavaria car trying to come around the outside. Can't quite get there on the Biopools man. Great to see Oz just hanging in there. Keeping it all together. Behind them you can see JB Breath starting to close in. Then once again Lamprecht fighting with Craig Ball. Down on that back straight. Starting to open up there. The battle we're going to watch out for though is between the Bavaria car of uh, Everstein and that man there, number 31, J.B. Britt. J.B. Britt in the Triplicon construction car, heading up the hill now. Looking for a chance to close things down. He's not late enough on the brakes though, but a great bit of late braking coming out of Everstein. He's closed the gap and now tucks into the back end of Baggioni's wing. They flick it through Mix FM and down the hill once again. Billy Erasmus hanging on for now. Trying to close down on Andreas Mayer. Mayer pulling away at the front. Leroy trying to close down there for a second and third place battle with Billy. Ooh, a little bit sideways there from Everstein. He's on the dirty stuff. That's not where you want to be. Those Bridgestones will take a little bit of strain. And yes, almost immediately, J.B. Beert sets up a chance to get through. Just wasn't quite close enough. Let's see how good the grip is as they come down into turn two. Looks like all the rubble is off those tyres now. It won't take too long to get them off. And now he looks to go back at Baggioni through turn three. Further back, let's have a look and see what's happening in Class D. Troy Cochran under a bit of pressure here. Nick Macris diving on the inside as he got through. I think he might have. Macris has just got through. And just behind them. Ooh! Very big moment there. Sure. Kiesing and Gunpath very close. Looks like there's a 27 car in there as well. Yes, indeed. Hillegen looking for a chance. So a five-way battle for the front end of Class D. Don't normally see that. Macris has got a little bit of a margin now, pulling away there from Cochran. And it's Illigen. Pressure being applied there by the 90 car of Warren Dodd. So uh, Warren, Warren Dodd now coming to join the party too. Further up the road, Paolo de Rowe closing in on Billy Erasmus. The Big Boss Auto and Viking Mining Machine. This is for second place. Leroux's on the inside. Billy gets a late apex looking for the drive out of the corner, but he runs wide. Oh, you can't do that with Leroy. Leroy has got a punch in that BMW of note. And there you see it. Just goes flying past the young man. Jimmy T now fighting hard here with Ball. Ball's on his tail. Big Boss Auto and SA Safe Car. The RSI BMW behind that. And hunting both of them down. Looks like it's Krobler. Yes, Krobler coming into the mix. Make their gearbox car in there as well. Nothing in it between those three cars. And just in there as well. Mike Krobler, he's just ahead of them. So it's kind of a Krobler sandwich there. Mike at the front, Shane at the back. With some tomato sauce and mustard in the middle. As they head to the top of the hill, ball on the inside now. Is he good enough on the brakes to get on the inside of Jimmy T? T's late on the brakes. Oh, they went three by three out of turn five. That is brilliant stuff. Ball now going to go two by two with Jimmy T. He's got the inside line. To make a little hold that outside line and only the inside for the next two corners. He knows that. 
And it's worked out perfectly. But here comes Craig Ball. Craig Ball goes on the inside. T goes defensive. Good driving there from Jimmy. Oh, he locks up. That could be costly locking up. And he's still locked up. And he's sideways onto the rumble strip. Here comes Ball. Diving on his inside. Can he get through now into turn one? No, he can't. Big Boss Auto versus RSR versus Mayfair Gearbox. As they head down onto the braking markers for turn two. Up the road. Osby Bagioni still hanging on for a potential top three finish. Toby Britt and Everstein now fighting hard. Ooh. Ooh, that was nasty. That was nasty. JB coming across on Jan Everstein. Gave him a little front end tap there. Got him out of shape. Everstein very lucky to hold on to that one. Or we're going to see a little bit of uh, retribution for that. Let's wait and see. He's going to come back at him. Oh, yes. He's putting the pressure on. This is fantastic racing as always in the Bridgestone BMW Car Club Racing Series. Further back in the pack. Always nice to see that gun path in it as well. That's the hot lap vehicle, of course. And the Bridgestone Car Club Racing Series promotional car. Here comes Ball on the inside of Jimmy T. Jimmy T shuts, goes to the middle of the track. Doesn't give anybody any room. There's a little bit of smoke coming out of T's car. Don't know if that's body rub or there's something wrong with the engine, but there's certainly a problem on that car. Could be affecting the drive later on. He shuts the door firmly in Ball's face again. Runs wide this time. Craig Ball going to go around the outside. Jimmy T's on the inside. Mark Krobler hanging on for now. Shane Krobler going to try and capitalize on any mistake out of these two cars. Behind them coming into play, Neil Reynolds. Not too far off now. This is fantastic. Oh, yeah, there we go. I thought so. T had a little bit of a drive problem there, and that smoke coming out of the car is a big concern for me. Mark Krobler ahead. Shane Krobler we're on board with there. And he's possibly going to look to do the same thing now and capitalize on a, a little bit of an ailing car, I'd have to say. Heading up the hill. Can Jimmy T keep it all together? Can he come back at Craig Ball? Let's wait and see as they come on the brakes now into Sassel. You can see those rain clouds. Clouds are coming. It's going to get wet here soon. Let's wait and see. Hopefully not during this race. Here they come. Under braking. For Kenwood. Double right-hander. It's the left into Mix FM now. T's right back there. So is Strobler. Here comes Reynolds. We've got five cars fighting here. Absolutely amazing stuff. And right now, of course, we are looking at the fight for third, fourth, and fifth place. Make that second. Third, fourth, and fifth place as we've got a car out of shape. Wow, big maneuver there from the 19 car. And Rick LaRoe looking to try and come back through the field. And unfortunately, made a mistake there to turn four. And it's fallen by the wayside. Costly mistake there for Rick. And it's dropped him down to fifth place, which means uh, Lorenzo Guterri pretty much plain sailing coming across the line there. No worries at all for him. Second and third place, Andreas Mayer and Paolo Leroux. Villa Rasmus eventually came through for fourth place. Great effort there, Guterri taking the tees. Class B going to Mayer. And we're still going to sort this out as they come down under breaking markers here into the final turn. Mike Robler leads out. Jimmy T's on the outside. Craig Ball's on his inside. He's run wide. Oh, he's run wide. Nick tapped. Oh, Krobler and Jimmy T across the finish line. Well, they're across the finish line, but not on the racetrack. They went completely off circuit. Can you believe that? Have a look at that. There's Ball coming on the inside. Very, very radical move there from Craig Ball. He tries to hold on to the inside line. Jimmy T gives him a little, gets a little tap from him. He runs wide. T puts a wheel on the dirt, comes across, tags Krobler, and the two of them cross the line in the dirty stuff. Still going to be classified, but what a way to finish the race. Sure, that's not what you wanted to be doing. Jimmy T eventually coming to a stop on the exit point, or the entrance point there of turn one. So Marks takes the victory. Mike Krobler and Craig Ball survive with a big incident there behind between Jimmy T and Shane Krobler. Macris taking the Class Ds. Up next, we head to the Motul NPCs and SRAs combined. Welcome back to Inland Championship Action. It's the Motul NPCs and Super Saloons combined. We're at SWAT Corps, 2.4 Ks of racing coming. And in this category, it's basically the Golfs versus the Hondas. A couple of little cars coming to join now. Local yokels coming out of the uh, SWAT Corps stable. But look out for him because Louis Clouty in that SV Tech Beetle is very quick. Front row though, heading down towards turn one. Keegan Pontus on the outside, already being uh, attacked as they go into turn number one. Absolutely, oh, it's a brilliant start there from Pontus. Can he keep the rest of these cars at bay though? It's not gonna be easy. You can see Clutie there coming through the pack as well. Watch out for Warren Fenton. 
Dirk Lawrence going to start making his way to the front hopefully soon. But you can see just how difficult it is with a slightly bigger pack of cars. NPCs are not normally combined with the Super Saloon category. It looks like Alex Knutzer and Ishmael Peck starting to put the pressure on from the word go. We're on board here with Charles Derrick. EV Dynamics man going through turn four. Chance to try and get good drive up the hill. Just losing out on the slightly more powerful cars. A little bit more slipstream car there as well. 107, of course, is his teammate. That's Paul Fenikirk. And Fenikirk at this stage sitting in about fourth or fifth place there by the looks of things. In fact, it's up to third. On their tail. Fenton starting to come through. If I'm not mistaken, it's correct to see a couple of other new entries to this category. And one of them particularly I want to be picking up on is not that one. That is a great car. 63 is Ishmael Beck. But just behind him there, that's an old SAS car by the looks of things. Shane Cruen out of shape though. Whoa! Left, right, sideways, evasive action. One of the cars that had to take evasive action there. Great driving from Dirk Lawrence to avoid the spinning car. But the Golf was on the sideline. And Lawrence had to come out of it slightly. So the Golfs that missed him have now got past Dirk Lawrence. And he's got to try and come back at them. Late breaking down into turn two. Closing in there on that Ancro Building Project's car. So, so close here between these guys. Sean Kraus under a bit of pressure now. Lawrence has got a fast Honda. He dives on the inside of the polo and makes it stick. Gets onto the back straight. Changes to fourth and moves through. Triple three is the car. I was talking about that's Alex Knutzer. Yes, certainly that is an old SAS car as it heads up to the top of the hill. And one of the polos pulling to the sideline. That's one of the uh, Ancro Building Project's car. I wonder if that might be Rowan Ellis. 189, I think it says on the side of the car. And that's such a pity for that machine. Possibly Wayne Krauss in that car. It's the second of the Ancro Building Project's machines. So I'm not quite sure, but unfortunately with uh, the timing we had, we didn't have the name of that car. There's his brother, Sean, and he's still fighting hard there, as you can see, with Dirk Lawrence. Fenton leading this little train of cars. Ella's on their tail. Then it's Lawrence trying to make up the ground after having to take some evasive driving action. Second of those Ancro cars is Sean Krauss as they come across the line. Dirk Lawrence using some great lines through turn one. Trying to close down on his stable mate there, Warren Fenton in the first of the Hondas. Further up the road, Pottis just opening up a massive margin. There's not really an answer to that EV Dynamics Honda Civic of his. There have been a couple of guys that have come here to try and beat him, but they haven't quite got there. 2-3-2, two, two. here's Burner. Cooley around his outside. Oh, how cool is that? Little Mini Cooper in there as well. Starting to throw in the mix. Fantastic stuff there from Andre Diedrichs in the Alftrans car. That's the little Mini Cooper S tucked into the back end of these two space frames. Heading down the hill now and late on the brakes into GNH Transport Corner. Further up the field, or further back in the field I should say, there you can see the Italian Stallion and Franco de Matteo having some fun of his own. Don McKay in there. Oh, super four, five, six golf ones. Shane Kruen is one of them. And he's trying to close down here on de Matteo in the Deltic Batteries Ford Laser. So it's EV Dynamics versus Deltic Batteries Golf versus Ford Laser. Golf on the inside, looks like he might have just got the edge. 142 Keanu Fenta, having to take the long way around turn two. Super start here, and everybody trying to just keep it all together now for the last part of this race. Ella's about to be shown the way through turn four by that JDM tuning Honda. Ella's tucks in behind him, follows him up the hill. Maybe try a late breaking maneuver into Sassel as they come up there. White flags means there's a slow car on track. You have to just be careful of the slower car that they're coming up on. Maybe a car with an issue. Don't want to be an issue for these guys, though, as they come through. There's the car we're talking about. Exiting Kenwood. They uh, managed to get through. Just, just avoiding that slow car. But battle's continuing right through the pack. Oh, late braking in a Golf 1. That's always cool going there. <laughs> Ibrahim Peck will tell you all about it. As he heads up the hill now, side by side. That's Fenta coming up on the inside of Di Matteo. Keanu Fenta, Peck, and Di Matteo, three by three into turn five, usually ends up in tears. This time though, they're gonna go four by four into turn six. Oh, what a ride here, what a drive from these guys, putting on a show of note. Italian Stallion using his advantage, and of course he's probably got a little bit more advantage on these other drivers than what the golf guys have got, having spent oodles of time going around this track in various vehicles. Peck's not worried about that. The gear down man looking for a way to get on the inside of that Deltic Ford Laser. Keanu hanging on to the lead of this little battle for now. There's Peck diving through. Oh, Stallion didn't have an answer there. I don't think he expected that move there from Peck. 
Louis Clutie in second place. We haven't really seen much of the first two cars. Third place is still for Nikuk. On his tail is Kulitsa coming through and Peck. Ishmael Peck in the 63 machine. And of course, that is a Mercedes Benz SLK space frame. He's trying to close down there on that turbocharged EV Dynamics Golf up for Nikuk. JDM versus Ellis. You can see uh, Ron Ellis in that FEC car. Ooh, a little bit sideways. I like it when cars get sideways. That's what we like to see. I know that's going to be uh, Bjorn Gerben, I think it was, that was getting a bit sideways there in that GTV6 as he comes up under braking now for turn two. Problems on the sideline. Another car pulling to uh, the left hand side and out of our sights as this big train of golfs and forwards come down into turn one. McKay looking for a way through. Can he find it? No, he can't. He's hard on the brakes looking for a way, but no. Door firmly shut there by the Deltic Battery Ford Laser. And the Stallion hangs on. He's side by side with Fenton as they go into turn three. The Golfs just have a little bit more drive than that Ford, but the handling of the Ford is very good. It's probably because there's a little bit more aerodynamic than those uh, box Golfs. But uh, needless to say, the Stallion is in a bit of a battle here. He didn't quite expect this one, I'm sure. But he's not going to give up. Here comes the leader though, diving through on the inside. And up onto the braking markers, EV Dynamics. We're going to be happy with this because the Honda Civic of Keegan Pottis once again the class of the field. Opening up a big margin over Louis Clouty. Great to have that SVE Tech Beetle of Clouty's. It was heading up the hill actually as we see the leader heading down the hill. So almost that whole top section the lead there for the EV Dynamics machine. And a good drive there from Pottis. Great drive from Ellis. He puts pressure on and he gets through. Dirk Lawrence making an uncharacteristic mistake there into turn five. And he just gets squeezed out. Gerber tries to come back at him. Here comes the move once again from the Honda man. Ellis going to tuck back and see if he can get the drive down now. Only a couple of laps to go for these guys. Brilliant racing, I've got to say. And fantastic battles right through these packs. Lawrence fighting there with Gerbert. Fighting with Ellis. This is what it's all about now. They come down into turn two. Honda taking on the Golf, taking on the Alpha. Three marks and three gentlemen that definitely can drive. Yeah, that's what cops. Peck under a bit of pressure now. The Sascar dives on the inside. Oh, nice one from Kruza. The wind's man just diving through and finding a way past Arnish Malpeck. Peck trying to come back at him now in the SLK. He's going to have to work hard to try and catch that V8. The V8 trying to close down there on Paul Fanico just up the road. This is Cooley. Cooley looking good at this point for a potential fourth place in the Super Saloons. Kraus has moved up nicely. He's now up in a 12th place overall. And in his category, lying second. He's got to try and find a way to close things down now on Darak, who's a bit further up the road from him. Back to this battle. Don versus the Italian Stallion. That's kind of an Italian theme there. I think it might be a Mafia battle. As Don goes on the inside, trying to find a way through. And Franco just trying to keep him honest. Key on the inside. Oh, it's so close. Is he good enough? Oh, <laughs> wing mirror to wing mirror stuff as they go through turn five. Now into turn six. It's a double right-hander in six. Left-hander into seven, Mix FM corner. Still wing mirror to wing mirror. Eventually, just closing in behind him. But he dives on the inside for the last turn. Trying to catch the Stallion out. Di Matteo was wily on it. And with two laps to go, this fight is going to be to the checkered flag. Shaw, oh, brilliant. They're in the turn one again. The golf just has an edge at the top of the circuit. And the Ford at the bottom. But coming to the line, this man has not been touched. Phenomenal drive once again from Keegan Pottis. Another victory there for the EV Dynamics team. He'll take Class A in the modified production cars. Class B going to uh, Paul Finnickirk. A good drive from him, beating Dirk Lawrence. And Derek takes it out ahead of Sean Kraus in Class C. Kenny Derek comes through for a good victory as well, beating out Imbran Peck. Daniel Luves taking the win there ahead of Pereira. And Louis Clutzi beats out a hard charging Warren Fenton. Super Saloons, it was all about Alex Knutzer. Good to see one of those SAS cars back on track and Peck in second. 
Yeah, it was actually incredible. I've been battling with a misfire and an electrical problem. I started 19th. I'm not sure where I finished on the grid, but I think I came second in class, which helps for, for the overall results. I'm very chuffed with that. Unfortunately, due to some big rain here at Swatkops, the cars are going to go out in wet conditions, but I don't know how long they're going to be out there. It is absolutely a torrential downpour here. Let's wait and see what the COC has to say. There you can see it. Unfortunately, they're not even getting the race to start. A couple of guys braving it, but red flags almost instantaneously coming out, which means we'll have to just make the day on the first heats racing. Up next, though, join us for some wet action and some dry action as the NX Legends make their way out onto the circuit. The Likumali NX Legends are up next here at Swatkops as part of the Inland Championship, all combined here today with a couple of extra categories. Now, this championship is certainly still up for grabs, and there's been some fantastic racing all season long. Billy Erasmus is always good here, so is Justin Robertson. Richard Upton and Gerard Rue will definitely be pushing hard. But as we get things underway now, heading down towards turn number one. And they spread out six by six into turn one. Eventually going two by two. Erasmus on the inside, Justin Robinson around his outside. Is that Upton who might have got to the front end? No, it's not by the looks of things. It's going to be the Ziegler car there. Yes, it is. Richard Upton trying to lead things out as they get away. The rest of them coming through there. Good to see a bigger pack of cars once again. Some more guys getting involved in the series, and Devin Robinson and his team are doing a great job to get some more guys into the seats. And this is the kind of racing you can expect. Have a look at that. It's not like normal racing, where you'll see everybody slotting in and getting a chance to run line astern through turn four. No, no, they only do that as they go into turn four. Then they all spread out again for turn five. Up front, hard braking. And it's Erasmus around the outside. A super start there from Justin Robinson, his teammate. In the mid-back, Carrot Roux starting to come through as well. The 23 car, keep an eye on Charles. Charles Roux looks, for a, looks pretty dangerous at this point. The most dangerous man on track at the moment, though, is Erasmus, as he dives through, trying to find a way through on the champion. Upton shuts it all. So it's Upton from Erasmus. They head down under that back straight away now. Richard Van Hieda in the middle of it. But he can't find a way past just yet. This is Justin Robertson's point of view as he goes through turn four, heading up the hill now. His teammate has just got to the front end. You can see the pink car leading things out. And under braking, we'll have to try and fend off three cars who are very, very close to him and very evenly matched to his pace that we've seen here all weekend long. Up to losing out to Van Hieda. Can he keep it all together? No, he can't. Here comes Justin Robertson. Robertson diving on the inside. Can he get through? Yes, he can. Robertson has made a move and got through on the inside. Can he cement it down into the final turn and go up to third place? Some great driving there. And it looks like Jason Lusmore also trying to uh, get into the mix here as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen between these first four cars that are about to become the first seven cars. And they go down in turn two. The three cars just behind have closed in on those first four. So we're almost at a seven-way battle for the lead. Erasmus trying to open up a bit of a margin. That's not going to be easy to do. Coming onto that back straight now. Justin Robertson going to close things down and keep out the attack from Upton. 73 into the mix as well. As I mentioned earlier on, Sean Moore going to close in on his stable mate at the front end. Loose Moore looking for a way past. Robertson goes defensive. Upton having to go around the outside. Can he make it stick? No, he can't. Oh, Vili Erasmus using every inch of the road available and a little bit more as well. As he came out of turn five, Sassel corner, flicked it through Kenwood. Now comes down the hill out of Mix FM. Late braking required, Erasmus trying to hang on. This is fantastic racing. Jason Lusmore hasn't found a way past just yet, but he's certainly not giving up. Neither is Justin Robertson. Robertson now diving on the inside of Lusmore. Can't quite make it stick through there. Erasmus carries good corner speed. Up the hill now. Loose Moore was on a tighter line. He now looks to go on the brakes and just try and outgun the big boss car in front of him. Can't be done yet. Shaw, oh, man. Bumper to bumper action here in NX Legends, and that's exactly what you'll find every time these cars go on track. 
Now heading down the hill. Robertson going to dive on the inside. No, this time stays line of stern. Just maintains the pressure onto the back end of Lusmore. He's got his own pressure coming from the number one car behind. A little bit of a problem here for one of the cars pulling into pit lane, unfortunately. Now we're coming into some back markers as well. Ed Cottrell. Heads up, buddy. Here comes the steam train. Blue flags will be waving frantically for the slower cars. It heads up to the hill. Watch out for those flags from the marshal there on the sideline. Justin Robertson going defensive. Fending off the attack there. And, oh, using that back marker. Forced Upton into a little bit of a wider line. Upton had to come out of it. You can see he's lost half a car length. And because he had to roll out with that back marker, that half a car length might just be what Justin Robertson needs. Loose ball looking for a way through. Can't find it yet. Erasmus just keeping that car dead center. Not allowing anybody, any room to try and get through. Further back, super action as well. Right through the field as Levine gets past and eventually gets through on Mornay de Toy. Or does he? No, the two of them going side by side of turn one. Out of turn three, third place. Also, pretty much wheel to wheel. Justin Robertson looking for a championship here. Upton looking to retain his championship. He goes defensive. Robertson cuts across. That's the one move he's allowed to make. Now Upton's going to come around his outside. Had to take a bit of a longer ride through there. Change up for the lead though. Loose balls hit the front. The 12th car of Erasmus dropping back one. And he moves down into second place now. They cut out Mixon down the hill. Wait for the late braking. Oh, it's all, all five cars. Very late on the brakes down into the final turn. Yeah, it's Watkops. Couple of laps to go. Erasmus wants this one. Detoy and Levine going at it further back. Oh, running a bit wide. And the 30 cars out of shape. Good catch there from Warner Detoy, but it opens up the door and Stephen Levine will capitalize on that. Diving through. Great opportunistic driving. Sees the man make a mistake, dives through and gets past. Here they come. These are the top three cars. They were almost three by three into turn four. And this time Erasmus is in the ideal position. He gets up into the lead. Here comes Justin Robertson, his teammate. How's this? Three by three under braking for turn five. Robertson on the inside. And he forces. Oh, there's a mistake. Oh, a little touch there. And it looks like, yes, 73 on the inside. That's not where he wanted to end up. Sean Moore getting a little tag. And unfortunately, Luce Moore got the brunt of that. It had to be taken off the circuit as well. That's going to give a clean run to the line for Villa Rasmus. Justin Robertson in second place. And Richard Upton eventually will come through in third, avoiding that action that happened at the top end. The Masters class looks like it's gone to Carrot Rue. But no, Justin Robertson would have taken the Masters. Further back there. The rest of the field comes streaming through there, Charles Rue, and just in the background, Jagger Robertson taking the Young Lions. So hopefully the rain stays away for the next two heats of racing. Join us after the break for Heat 2 of the Liquid Molly in its Legends. Welcome back to Inland Championship Action. Real people and real racing. We don't get much more real racing than these guys. The Liquid Molly NX Legends heading out for heat number two now. Billy Erasmus has taken one victory so far. Jason Loosemore was really up for one and unfortunately got taken out uncharacteristically there with a little tap. And when I say that, I mean tongue in cheek because there's always tapping when it comes to these cars. 713 leading things up down into turn number one as they go down there. A super start from the 713 of Chris Hoy. Can he keep it all together though? On his outside, it's a 73 car, and you can see just how hard Sean Moore is working right from the word go. But keep an eye on that mid-pack, because those are all the leaders from race number one. They're going to have to come through from the back of the field now to get to the front end. And you've got to make it through this first lap, otherwise you lose massive amounts of advantage. And that's why Hoy is losing out advantage now. Under attack there from the 68 of Carrot Rue. Loose Moore's there, so is Justin Robinson, so is Villa Erasmus. But at the front end, looks like it's Upton who's disappearing. Sean Moore also coming through that pack. It could be Moore or Upton. Very similar livery on those two cars. There it is, Moore. Behind him. Here they come. Lining them up. Oh, Rue cutting the nose off. Justin Robertson just avoiding that. 
Now coming down, out of Mix FM corner. They come down into the breaking markers for GNH Transport. There comes Upton. Upton dives through on uh, Fundafenta. Yeah, that's a good move there. And uh, Johan Fundafenta in the AutoZone car not having an answer to the number one plate. Loose more. Loose as anything. Uh, turn number one. Closing down on that 713 of Chris Hoy. Under attack as well from the 68 of Gerard Rue and Justin Robertson and Vidya Rasmus. Hoy just being a little bit of thorn in the roses there at this stage. Spoiling the day for our usual contenders, but Hoy take nothing away from him. One of the best drives you've seen out of him as he heads up into turn four. This is what it's all about in your next legends. You've got to make those moves stick. You've got to get through. You cannot afford to lose ground. Giving an advantage to the man out front. 73, trying to take that advantage and use it. Sean Moore getting away from this pack. As I say that, they start to close him down. Justin Robertson and Rue once again, same corner, same manoeuvre. Can't quite find a way past Ken Robertson. He's going to have to try another line. Upton is now onto the back end of race one winner, Valia Rasmus. Rasmus looking for a double victory here today, hopefully. Let's see whether he can find a way through this pack. He can see just how hectic it's getting in that first six cars. You don't want to make a mistake right now, that is for sure. So out front, Sean Moore just maintaining. Being closed down slowly but surely by this pack. And they're getting faster and faster as they start to circulate now into the mid part of the second race of the Liquid Molly NX Legends. Down to the back straight, Hoy closing in. It looks like a little bit of fun and games out for the Rue boys. As they get, oh, what a move there from Hoy. Diving through and finding a way past Shaw. Loose ball's going with him. So is Scarrot and so is Justin. Justin decides he's going to try a different line. Under breaking, Hoy's good. Great drive there. And maintains the outside line, but he runs and makes a slight mistake. Little understeer has cost him. Rue trying to capitalize as well. In fact, both the Rue boys looking for a way to try and capitalize on that mistake there from Chris Hoy. Justin Robinson on the inside of Rue. Heading down onto the breakers now. Rue comes across. So does Upton. Upton tries to go and catch out Justin Robinson. He saw him coming. Didn't quite get through there. Billy Erasmus now also trying to uh, get through. He's found a way past. Carrot has dropped down one position. Billy Erasmus is through. Hoy runs wide. Hoy putting a wheel on the dirt. And late braking has allowed him to dive through on the 23 car there of Charles Rue. Now Hoy tries to get away. Look how evenly matched these cars are. It's all about driver skill. You've got to know what to do in this machine. And that's why, because you're going to go three by three out of turn three. Make that four by four into turn four. Two Rue boys on the inside. Billy Rasmus carrying great corner speed around the outside. Hoy tries to go with him. Justin Robbins going to dive on the inside of Gerard Rue as they get to the braking point. No, he's not. Gives him a little bit of a bump rub. A bump nudge up the top end. And oh, Hoy out of shape. Hoy runs wide. He's completely out of shape. Spins it out all on his own. Trying to catch it. Oh, that inside road has helped him. Gets him back on track rapidly. Just behind Jagger Robertson there. Leading the Young Lions. And just ahead of the 33 car of Levine. Very lucky maneuver there from Chris Hoy. But now Loosemore closes in onto the front end. And it looks like the days are numbered. 73 machine could be in trouble. Sean Moore goes into the middle of the track trying to defend. Loose ball's on his tail. So is Erasmus. So is Ruse. So is Robinson. Any one of those first five can take this victory. We saw what went wrong in race number one. Hopefully nothing going to be similar on a similar vein here in race two. Loose ball can't afford another crash. And of course, the top two cars right now are the two cars that ended up in the kitty litter at the top of this hill. Oh, so late from Loosemore. Climbs on the brakes, dives in. Can he make it stick? Yes, he can. Loosemore leads things out now for the first time. It's taken them this long to get through on the leader. And now that he's got through, Sean Moore's got more pressure. Moore tries to come immediately back. Good move there. Not a bad strategy. Try and make the move stick and come straight back at the driver who's got past you. Billy Erasmus now looking to just wait for uh, a similar maneuver to open up if there is one. He forces more wide. 
Comes around his outside into turn two. You'll have to watch out for Roo Roo's right there, waiting to capitalize on any mistake out of Erasmus or Moore. Moore got a little bit sideways. Justin Robertson diving on the inside as well, trying to find a way past on Roo as that door opened up. Further back there, that is Edward Cottrell fighting once again there with Mornay de Toy. Stephen Levine a little bit further up the road there. So not too much of an issue there, but it uh, looks like Mornay de Toy could be in some fun and games. Round the outside of three comes Erasmus. On the inside is Rue. Justin Robinson trying to use that outside line as well. You can see that his uh, young teammate is getting great drive out of turn four on that outside line. And he cements second place, getting past Sean Moore eventually. And then Gunn puts the car in the middle of the track to not allow Moore a chance to come back at him. Moore comes back for turn six though. Erasmus is better on the brakes, he's got the better line. Starts to slip and slide. Oh, and Moore's back. Rue now comes in there as well. Here comes Robertson. Just behind them, look out as well for Upton. Four by four into turn eight. That could end up in tears. Very lucky to avoid action there, but a great bit of respective driving from all five cars. Enough room to play. But only just. <laughs> Phenomenal. NX legend action as always. That's why Liqui Moly are on board with these guys. Devin Robinson must be standing on the sidelines thinking to himself, hang on a second, I need to get back into this. This is my kind of racing. They come out of the double right hand and of course now into the big right hand sweep. Issues in the background. Oh, looks like the 20 car there. Getting a bit out of shape. Dane van Hitter. Big mistake. Coming into turn number two. That's allowed uh, Johan van der Venter to come through there in the auto zone car. Upton on the tailpiece of Robertson. Fending off Gerard Rue from the outside. Rue keeps him honest as they get under brakes for the top of the hill into Sassel. Oh, late breaking from the champion. Keeps Rue out. Charles Rue closing back in again. So we've got the leader with a small margin. Three cars fighting for second to fourth. Then you've got five and six absolutely locked in it. Little maneuver there from Sean Moore, ran him wide. Moore sideways, yeah, the tires were dirty. Moore had no problem there. Unfortunately, with those dirty tires going into turn eight, he got a little bit out of shape, but he managed to catch it. But it has demoted him down one position and promoted Justin Robertson up to third. So Robertson up to third. Luce Moore looking to hang on for this lead. The fight's going to be for third year, I think. Moore, Upton, the two ruse. And just behind them, it looks like it might be uh, Willem van Nikkerk starting to come into play. Recovering after that spin, the 20 car. Dane van Heerde going at it side by side with Van der Venter. Back to the leaders. Luce Moore and Erasmus getting away. Robertson fending off the attack. Can't keep out. A great move there from Sean Moore around his outside. Robertson might have the drive up the hill though. He's got a slightly tighter line. Is he good enough on the brakes now to go over go? Not close enough yet. Closes in on the back end of Moore. Rue onto the back end of Upton. Side by side, Robertson dives on his inside and gets it a bit sideways, which means Moore had to back out. Moore just backs out, lives to fight another corner. As they come down onto the braking markers again into GNH Transport Corner, Jason Lusmore looking tasty and taking the second victory on the day. Vili Erasmus comes through a super effort in second place in the pro category. In the Masters, it was Justin Robertson who took the win ahead of Sean Moore and Gerard Rue. And in the semi-pros, Chris Hoy ahead of Dane Van Heerde with Jagger Robertson yet again taking the Young Lions. Well, as we saw in the Modified and the Super Saloons, the pouring rain unfortunately has kept the legends off track and two heats in the day are going to have to be enough. So from a wet Swat Corps, we hope to see you back at Swat Corps on the 3rd of November for the next round of the Inland Championship combined with the historic tour.